Hey everybody, today we're going to be seeing what happens when you drop sodium metal in Orbeez and also what happens when you put calcium carbide in Orbeez. You may have already seen a lot of videos seeing what happens when you put sodium metal in water. It quickly forms hydrogen gas and due to the heat of the reaction that hydrogen gas ignites and ends up in a large explosion. Whoa. What's interesting though is it's been shown in research papers that the initial explosion is actually due to ion repulsion of the sodium ions in the water. So as the sodium drops in the water it quickly reacts with the water to form sodium ions and those ions are now positively charged and so they want to repel each other. So they quickly repel each other and as they do that it forms a large explosion underwater. And the initial reaction melts the sodium making it molten sodium and it causes it to spread out in little spikes and those spikes cause it to have even more surface area so it causes it to react even faster. And so a bunch of hydrogen gas is formed and it ends up causing a large explosion. So I've done experiments before with sodium, but in this case I want to see what happens when you put sodium metal on Orbeez. So Orbeez are a super absorbent polymer and they absorb a lot of water. By the time they're fully expanded they're over 99% water. So a while ago Techrax did a video where he dropped a sodium chunk of metal into a big pool of Orbeez but the pool was still filled with water, so basically it was just like throwing a chunk of Orbeez in water. But what I want to do is see what happens when you put sodium metal on Orbeez that don't have water in them anymore. So it's just the water that's been absorbed into the Orbeez. And then after that I want to see what happens when you put calcium carbide on them. So calcium carbide also reacts with water, but it doesn't form hydrogen gas, it forms acetylene, which is also very flammable. Watch what happens when you put calcium carbide on ice. I call this the burning ice experiment. So first I'll sprinkle some of these calcium carbide chunks in here. Okay, and we pour the ice in. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Don't want too many of these bubbles to build up because they'll explode. So that's what happens when you put calcium carbide in ice. But let's see what happens if you put it in Orbeez. Okay, first we need to extract out our Orbeez that are not wet. So even though they've been soaking in water, I didn't get them so they're fully absorbed. So they have a little bit more room to suck in water. So that should make sure that the Orbeez are actually dry when we drop the sodium in. And by dry, I mean there's not liquid water around them, but all of the water is contained within the Orbeez. I'm just going to strain it out here, my Orbeez here. Okay, now here are our Orbeez with no water on them. So I'm not sure what will happen with these. I mean, overall they're pretty dry. If I stick my hand into them, you can see that it's just slightly damp. And so there is some moisture in there, but it's nothing like dropping it in liquid water. And so I'm not sure how fast the sodium will react with it, if at all. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, nothing's happening. No way. It's not reacting at all. Huh. 
but there's just not enough water for it to react with. Even though the Orbeez are 99.9% .9 water, the water can't get out of them to react with the sodium. Oh, it's starting to fizz a little. Uh-oh. It's doing something. Oh no! Whoa! Holy cow! <laughs> Is that it? I don't know where it went. Still see something going on in there. <laughs> this is scary. I don't know if it's gone yet. Well, the bowl is very warm now. So this is interesting. So what I think happened here is it took a while for the sodium to start reacting with the surface water on the Orbeez. Well, the Orbeez are way hot now. But once it did start to react with the water in the Orbeez, it drew out even more water. And so it made sodium hydroxide in the water that was now outside of the Orbeez. And because of that, it increased the osmotic pressure of the water outside the Orbeez, and so it sucked more water out of the Orbeez. Two videos ago, I did a video on this showing that if you put salt on Orbeez, it draws the water out of the Orbeez. So it was basically like we're putting salt on the Orbeez, sodium hydroxide, and so it drew more water out. And the more water that came out, the more it could react with. And then it was finally enough to catch on fire due to the heat of reaction and the hydrogen could start burning. But the reaction was nowhere near as explosive as it is when you put it in pure water, mainly because it can't have that ion repulsion going on as much. And also the reaction just doesn't happen as fast. Okay, now let's see what happens when we put some calcium carbide on the Orbeez. Whoa! Oh. oh man! <laughs> Burning Orbeez! <laughs> <laughs> so this reaction lasts much longer than when it's on the ice because it slows the reaction down so the acetylene can just keep coming off of it and it keeps getting ignited as it comes off of it. So now, so now the calcium carbide's at the bottom. I can hear it in the water bubbling, and so it's just bubbling up uh, acetylene gas, and so the more oxygen I give it, the faster it burns. The safest thing to do, actually, whenever you have any flammable gas is to always keep it burning because the more it burns, the less there is to burn all at once. So you want a slow burn of the gas. Okay, so our final product here is a very dangerous bowl of Orbeez. So this bowl of Orbeez now is extremely basic. So it's extremely caustic right now. Let's measure the pH of what's inside of here. So we've got a pH of 12.4 right now. So the reason it turned into a, such a high pH is because there's a bunch of hydroxide ions in there now. And that's from the reaction with the sodium and then also from the reaction of the calcium carbide later. So the, so the sodium formed sodium hydroxide and the calcium carbide formed calcium hydroxide. It actually took a long time before the sodium actually caught fire. 
So even though it had access to the water, because the water was bound up in the Orbeez, the super absorbent polymer was holding on to the water more than the sodium could take it. But then once more salt was formed in the water, then that drew the water out of the super absorbent polymers and then it could react with the sodium more. A lot of this slowed down reaction just has to do with the amount of surface area available for reaction. Well, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions about this video, let me know in the comment section and I'll try to get to them. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the Action Lab yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And if you haven't checked out the actionlab.com, head over there now to check out the Action Lab's new subscription box. This is a box where you can do similar experiments to the ones that you see me do on my channel. We have a new one coming out in about two months from now, which will be a self-pouring liquid, which should be pretty cool. The current one is the vacuum chamber box, which is awesome.